Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to talk about how you can get actionable data from Google Analytics in 10 minutes. So what I like to do when I look at Google Analytics to pull any um, actionable insights is one thing I will look at is some of the reports that I have set up. So there's a lot of great custom reports that you can set up through uh, Google Analytics. So Avinash Kaushik, for example, if you go to kaushik.net, that's uh, K-A-U-S-H-I-K, I I think. Anyway, Avinash Kaushik, search it up. Um, And he has a lot of different um, reports that you can kind of templatize and use for yourself. And the good thing about these reports now is that you can actually copy them directly into your your Google Analytics account. So you don't have to make it from scratch. There's reports such as, you know, your top performing content, the top links that are coming to your site as well. So you get a a good idea of what's going on on your website. Over time, I also like looking at, you know, my goal completions too. I want to see where a lot of my goals are coming from, uh, what segments are converting the best. Just looking at that to see, you know, hopefully we're trending upwards. And then if there's like a, if we're going downwards, like what's going on there. So I, I like to look at spikes as well, not just on the goal side, but on the traffic side too. If we're spiking for any particular reason, if we're going up, then it's like, okay, well, what's causing that? And then I want to look at, you know, what traffic sources are causing us to go up. And perhaps there's an action item there to build a, a stronger relationship with whoever's, um, you know, sending us that traffic. So those are just a couple of things I look at right off the bat when I go into analytics. And frankly, you know, the stuff I'm talking about right now takes me less than, than 10 minutes. So there's more to add. Yeah, so I always look at data as week over week or month over month, and I try to figure out, hey, what's climbing and what's declining. As Eric mentioned with goals, if you don't have goals set up, analytics is almost useless because then what are you measuring towards against, right? What are you trying to improve? Well, that's why you need goals and conversion data in there because then you can see what's causing good conversions and what's not. For example, I have over 800,000 Facebook fans and it's continually growing. I'm generating way and way more traffic each and every single month from Facebook. But you know what? My goal tracking shows that, hey, the best conversions are coming from the United States and the UK. Yet a lot of my Facebook traffic is coming from overseas. It's not about having more fans and more traffic. It's about having the right amount of fans and the right sort of traffic that's converting into customers. If I didn't have goal tracking set up, I wouldn't know this. It's really important that you do that more than anything else. And then slice and dice your data because then whenever you're looking at data within Google Analytics, if you scroll to the right, it'll show you those data points like the traffic sources, uh, pages, et cetera, and how many goal conversions they're causing. And that'll tell you what kind of content you should be writing more of, what kind of traffic sources you should be shooting for more of, right? Uh, But if you don't have goal tracking set up, you're going to be flying blind. And the other thing I would also say is with your Google Analytics, you want to hook it in with your Google Search Console. And you're probably wondering, well, what's the benefit of that? Can I just go to Search Console? Well, first and foremost, you get to save time, right? You don't have to open another uh, tab to go to Search Console. And the other thing is when you open Search Console and you're looking at specific landing pages, for example, you can cross-reference those with goals that you have on your site. So that way you're looking at how you're doing from an organic perspective and how well those goals are converting. So that's why I really like looking at Search Console. And you can see if you go to... um, you go into your analytics, go to acquisition and then click on search console and then you can hook it up there um, and then start to, you know, make make decisions from from looking at that data. Also, I like looking at campaigns. So hopefully if you're running any type of traffic at all, I'm hoping that you, you're adding UTM uh, parameters too for tracking. So you're looking at the source that it's coming from, what kind of ad content you're writing, um, the keywords as well. So you want to track all that stuff. And then when you go into clicking on all campaigns, um, not even just from an ad perspective, you know, it could be like, you know, if you're, um, if you're, let's say I paid Neil for our email blast, for example, um, then I can use UTM tracking there to see how well that email blast did. That way it's the same thing, right? You're tracking your goals. You're seeing how well things are going. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking at my analytics right now for the, the campaign section and I can see, you know, I can see my retargeting, how well that's performing, um, how well some of my, my webinars are doing too. And yeah, it's telling me, you know, my webinars do well actually for driving free consultation. So guess what? I should probably do more of those. We drove a lead through one of our co-scheduled posts. That's, you know, just like regular content that we're scheduling through our editorial calendar, which is um, ran through co-schedule. So it's like, okay, well, you know, maybe we can do more, more stuff of that. 
what can we replicate there? So a lot of decisions to make just by looking at the data, but you have to have the right foundation, the right plumbing set up first before you can start to make these smart decisions. Also, track your bounce rate religiously. If your bounce rate is terrible, what you'll find is your rankings on Google won't be as great compared to those controlled and yet an amazing bounce rate. So within your Google Analytics, click on behavior, site content, all pages. Then you'll notice on that report, there's a little drop down that says secondary dimension. And in there, click source slash medium. When you do that, that's under the acquisition. So you click acquisition and source dash medium. This will show you what sources are causing different bounce rates. And you want to look at Google Organics specifically and the bounce rates from that traffic source. Because if it's more controlled, then you're going to get way more Google traffic. If it's not, you're going to get less Google traffic. Once you find out what your bounce rate numbers are, you can Google you know, how to reduce your bounce rate. And then there's a ton of articles on that topic like I've written on that on neilpatel.com. I'm pretty sure Eric's written about that around the web somewhere. And just go through it and try to reduce your bounce rate because that'll give you more traffic. The other thing I would add is doing advanced segments. So again, if you go to Avinash's uh, blog, uh, and I'm I'm pretty sure Neil's also written about this too, but check out what advanced segments are. Um, Basically, you're able to segment people that are behaving differently on your website. So for example, you can segment people that have visited um, your pages for you know, more than five minutes or so, or people that have converted on your site or people that have visited, you know, four or more times uh, to your website. So these people are a lot more engaged. And you can also, the way you can see how these people are behaving, for example, if you look at people that have converted on your site, look at how they're flowing through your website. What pages are they reading the most? What are the trends, I guess, is is what I'm getting at. Um, so you do want to set up these advanced segments. Avanash has a lot of good segments that you can kind of copy over, I believe. And you can also share your segments with different accounts as well. So segmentation is really important. Everyone just, a lot of people just tend to look at all users, but, you know, looking at your organic traffic, how different converters are behaving, super important in terms of getting, you know, the right analysis moving forward. So Neil, anything else to add before we hop off? Yeah, so I'm actually loading up my Google Analytics right now. The one thing that I recommend people doing, because when you're doing advanced segments based on your traffic levels, they give you like sample data, like it's not the full amount. So then in essence, they just give you uh, smaller portions. So once you've loaded up your site, click on the admin section. And then when you click the admin section, you'll see three columns. One is called your general account, then property, and then view. Click on view settings. That's under the view section, which is the last one. And then you can copy your view and create different sections. So in your analytics, different subfolders. For example, I have a view just for Brazil. I have a view just for Germany. I have a view just for Spanish speaking countries. This allows me to see data, let's say just on Brazil without having sample data. All right. And one final thing I want to add or two final things, actually, you can also, obviously, if you have an e-commerce site, you should be looking at your e-commerce. You hopefully have your e-commerce tracking up correctly. In some cases, I've seen e-commerce companies that are, you know, they they don't even have their e-commerce tracking set up for whatever reason which doesn't make any sense at all because you you do want to be tracking your sales, right? And what SKUs are doing well, time to purchase and all that kind of stuff. Um, Also take a look at your, you can also look at multi-channel attribution too. How are people converting on your site from different sources, right? If they visited through organic first, do they come through Facebook later? What does their path look like? And you can see what paths tend to do the best and you can invest more money in there. That's super easy to look at. It'll take you like a, you know, a couple minutes just to, just to analyze those. And you can also, you're probably wondering, well, you know, um, what if I just want to focus on, uh, you know, giving more credit to the first and last click? You can do that. If you want to give the most credit to the last click, you can do that. Or you can do like a time decay as well. So a lot of different ways to, to skin a cat there. You know, overall with analytics, just again, I, I really want to stress having the plumbing set up correctly before you move forward. That's it for today's episode of Marketing School. We'll see you tomorrow. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.